whenever we speak about the presence of God and covenants, we are talking about some very, very serious issues. Because covenants are unbreakable, unchangeable agreement that God puts into manifestation vis-a-vis -vis his children. So, God is not going to change his mind. The Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. A son of man that he should change his mind. Hallelujah. On day number five of our fasting, we believe in God that we will have breakthroughs. In the year of open doors, God will cause things to happen in the name of Jesus. As we come face to face with the promises, we also have the faith to actualize the promises. Every child of God deserves to walk in confidence, to walk in the blessing. If you are the only person living on planet earth and you are you have a covenant with God, God will make sure that what he has promised in that covenant will come to pass. Praise the Lord. Amen. With that in mind, we we'll start talking about the covenant we have with God and what we got to do to make that covenant secure, permanent, powerful. That covenant comes to life, that we will leave it. Hallelujah. I said to myself, Father God, if I am the only person left, as I walk in this covenant, you will, you will show yourself powerful and strong in my life. You will answer when I call because it was your promise. But the covenant started somewhere. It started where? Somewhere. Somebody started it. And that is what I'm about to talk to you about. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 12, verses 1, and, verses 1 to 3, we heard about a man called Abram. Abram was a man that God decided to use to establish what will be an everlasting covenant with any person that will come to his kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. It says, and now the Lord said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house. Amen. To a land that I will show you. To a land that I will show you. It didn't say to the land that you will find. But it said, I will show you. So all that Abraham needed to do was to follow the voice that called him. Is he okay so far? Is he okay so far? Now look at verse number two. He said, I will make you great. I will make you a great nation. I will what? Make you a great nation. He will make him. Are you here? Are you here? Let's try it again. I will make you a great nation. How many people was he talking to? One person. But he said, I will make you into a great nation. He said, I will bless you. What did he say? I will. I will. Now, what is blessing? I will bless you. What does that mean? You know, sometimes we, we use this word, oh, bless you. Oh, God bless you. What does it mean? Power. Blessing is an empowerment. Empower to prosper. Empower to attain what is good. If you receive the blessing as one person, through that blessing, God will touch many. You see, that is why the Bible says a double-minded person is unstable. It will never, never receive blessing. Because at the point of blessing is the temptation of double-mindedness. 
You know, there's a, a scripture that says, Be still and know that I am God. Why would you be still? Because in agitation, everything that is thrown at you will never stick. That is why the enemy always wants you and I to be like him. He's a man who is going to and fro. He's going to and fro. He's a man of no fixed address. His mind is, is, is looking for something. And God said, no, be still and know that I am God. Some people listening at the sound of my voice, about 120 things you sit in church, but 150 things are running through your head like mice and rats playing. But still, you are in church. And you don't know that this is actually the plan of the enemy. That is the fight. So, God came to Abraham and he said, Abraham, hmm, look around you. You are the only person here. He said, yes. All your family members, you are going to leave them. He said, what? He said, yeah, you are going to leave them because I'm going to start something new with you. Okay. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. Listen to the command. Not only am I going to bless you, but you are going to be a blessing. Hmm. So it's not just me going around saying, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. No. But God was calling Abraham so that through Abraham, people will see the goodness of God. Yesterday, we mentioned certain things in that area. And then Pastor Mary was asking, what I say, <laughs> we will see the other part of God. No. The goodness of God is God's nature. Amen. There are some people in this world that the goodness of God is just for them. And when you look at their environment, you will see really that yes, the goodness of God is for just them. God did not bless you so that you alone will be the one that everybody must bow and koto to you. No, God bless you so that through you, the world will see a blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. If you make up your mind that God bless me, that I will be a blessing. God will begin to take you on a journey. First of all, he will test you. If what you said, you mean it. Because some of you, did I, did I tell you the, the, the joke about the guy who, who wanted to kill his child? And he said, God, I'm going to kill my child. But provide a, a goat for Christmas. I said to them, God is not going to fall for this nonsense. Because God knows our hearts even before we do the action. Hallelujah. Amen. So whatever um, Abraham is going to do already, it has been spoken. Say spoken. Already agreed. So as he walks, he was walking into what has been promised. Amen. So now you and I are beneficiaries of what started here. Which means we are walking in the same promise, but the promise have stages. Amen. But first of all, something must happen. Look at verse number three. I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Wow. Now that is a bold, great, fantastic statement. In you, God has made an agreement. God has come into partnership. God has made a covenant with Abraham. Remember, it isn't just for Abraham. Abraham is just a starting point. 
Amen? Amen? Now, what happened? You see, in verse 4, it was a response. Look at verse number 4. So, Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him. Whoever I went with, I'm not interested in that now. But what I'm interested in, he departed. Everyone look at me. If you look at Hebrews, Hebrews told us that this man left his house not knowing where he was going. But because he has heard God's word say go out, he took the risk. Bible says he left not knowing where he was going. But because God has commanded him to go, he made an agreement. You see, if you have a person you can trust and he tells you to do something, and you don't even understand why he said that. Because of the trust, you will do it. You will do what? You will do it. Why would you do it? Because you trust him. You know he will not lie to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, what is a covenant? Listen to this. A covenant is a contract. In the Bible, an agreement between God and his people in which God makes promises to his people and usually requires certain conducts and practices from his children. Hallelujah. God made covenants with Noah, with Moses. He made covenants with Abraham. But today, we are talking about the covenant of Abraham. Now, the covenant of Abraham is directly linked to us. As Christians. Because it's a covenant of faith. When you don't know what you are doing. But still you are doing. Because God has commanded. It's called the walk of faith. When you don't feel like it. But you are doing it. Because God has spoken it. It's called a covenant of faith. When you don't understand it. But yet still. You are doing it because God has spoken it. It is a covenant of faith. That is why the Bible says the just, which means the Christian, the person that has received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, will live by faith. When you take your faith out, you have what I call a religious system that people cross their hands and say, God, I wish you would do it. God, I wish you would do it. No. Covenant of faith says, God says this. If I do this, this is what will happen. You don't have to feel it, but you have to believe it. Hallelujah. Because God is relying on you to bless others. Can you imagine the 12 apostles? If they decided that ah, this thing is too difficult, we are going home, we are not going to do it again. Will you be sitting here today as a Christian? God always started with one. It started with one. And sometimes, some of you, it might surprise you sitting here. He wants to start something with you. Amen. Amen. But you see, you are so used to, you are so used to the, the religious system so much that the faith is not working. Faith is not easy. You know, people say, oh, you have to walk in faith. Faith is not easy because faith is complete trust in what God has said. It is, has got nothing to do with what you see, what you feel, what you taste, or what you hear. It's got everything of obeying what has been said. That is, yes, your hearing has got something to do with it. Because faith comes by hearing the word of God. Now, 
What am I trying to tell you this evening, this morning? Number one, when we have a covenant of prosperity, it tells us that God has mandated us to be a blessing that the world around us will see his goodness. So he said, Abraham, I'm calling you out. And when you go out, this is what you're going to do. You are going to be a blessing. But first of all, Abraham had to leave. Say leave. Come on, say leave. You know, when God says, I will bless you, he will do what? Bless you. If you leave and follow him. But you cannot stay in the same place and say, God, I don't know if this thing that you said is true. I don't know. I can't leave. Bless me before I leave. God said, no, we don't play like that. Hallelujah. Amen. Like you are holding on to something. And God says, let that go and I'll give you your own. You say, God, no. no. No, I can't. No, no, no. You give me. Then I let go of this. God said, that is not faith. Remember, I invited you for a faith walk. So I'm not going to encourage you to do this nonsense because it will never let you grow. Amen. Amen. So when you let go, it will look like you will fall. It will look like you will fail. I will not, I will not sugarcoat this for you today. No. It will look like this is the end. But if you let go, you say, ah, I'm still standing. I'm not dead. But then, you say, okay, God, I'm coming. I'm coming. Every person that is going to exercise faith will be tested. Especially when you speak it. Hallelujah. I am reminded today, even as I preach the covenant of prosperity, to tell you this. God did not call his children to suffer. We only suffer because we are disobedient. We only suffer because we don't want to or we don't know how to trust God. Because trusting God is a learning process. And if you don't want to learn it, it will come back to haunt you. And all the things that God has said about you, guess what? It begins to fizzle out. I pray in the name of Jesus on this day number five of your fasting that God will cause you to inherit that blessing that has already been provided in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. To cut a long story short, let's see something about this guy called Abraham that God called out. In, in Genesis chapter 13 verses 2, Bible tells us about the blessing that God promised. But that was just part. In Genesis chapter 13 verse 2, listen to what God says. He said, Abraham was very rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold. Remember, when he left, he left with some things. But God is telling us right now, I have confirmed my word that I spoke to him. That is just the beginning, but this is what I said, part of my promise to him. He is very rich in silver and in gold. Did you know how he got the silver and gold? He went to Egypt and he, 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 they, they saw the, his wife and the wife was so beautiful and the king came to take the wife and because he told them that the wife was his sister he was afraid amen amen so even his foolishness god used his foolishness to be a point of a blessing because he said that's my sister they took the, the lady and then god took a stroll into the Pharaoh's house. He said, if you dare touch this woman, you are a deadbeat. Hallelujah. Trust God to do something risky like this. Hallelujah. So, Sarah was being protected by angels. The people there can't see the angels. But the angels were going around there. Anytime anybody's trying, coming near Sarah, their stomach will... Hallelujah. God was displaying, but something happened. Listen. So, then, it dawned on the king that ah, this guy, this must be his wife. 
But first of all, when uh, Sarah went into the place, guess what happened? Ah, the king was so happy. He said, bring gold, bring gold. Abraham, take gold. Hey, bring silver. Abraham, take silver. He was just giving Abraham things. Abraham was saying, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> if you know what I know, thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So now, look, Abraham has banked everything. He said, God, <laughs> what's happening now? God said, don't worry. Remember, we had a plan. We had a what? What was the plan? Can somebody remind me? He said, I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse those who curse you. Which means anybody who takes anything from you, I will make them pay with interest. Hallelujah. Remember, you are going to be a blessing. You need to be blessed to be a blessing. You cannot give anybody what you don't have. The reason why so many Christians today are poor and disgusted because we have not made up our mind that when God blesses us, we will be a blessing. Amen. Everybody wants to be seen to be the ogre, the chief of me. You know, you are the only person who has, everybody must bow before you. And God said, look at this person. I'm not going to do that. But then, our covenant demands that we will be worshippers. We serve God. We build altars. Because a covenant has been established. Whatever you are doing right now, even the smallest thing, notes are being kept. Amen. Hallelujah. If God can get it through you, the world around you will see the glory of God on you. When Abraham started, nobody saw that he was a blessed man. But he was going and following what God says he will become. So, he has blessed. He was blessed. And God says, now, you got a silver, you got a gold. Our cover is blown. Get away from here. Get away. Quick. So, he went out with Sarah. And all that they have, they went out. And God established him as a blessing to his generation. Everything that God is going to do for you is in the walk. Come on, say walk. Come on, say walk. If you, if you stagnate, you sit somewhere and say, God, you got to do this for me before I move. You will sit there and rot. Even where you are today, even if you don't feel like it, keep walking with God. Hallelujah. Because that walk is a walk of prosperity. It's a walk of discovery. It's a walk that, hey, you will get to some places. Guess what happened? It will be very risky. It will take courage. It will take what? Courage for you to navigate all those places. Because God wants you to be strong. How many people know that if we are not tested, we will never be strong? If nothing happens to us, we will never grow backbones. But God wants you to be strong. He said, be strong in the Lord. Be do what? Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Praise the Lord. Say, I'm blessed to be a blessing. Come on, say, the covenant demands that I will be a blessing. Now, remember. I didn't say the command demands that you will be blessed. But let's play on words. Listen to what God says. It is more blessed to give than to receive. So what is important? Being blessed or you being a blessing? Are you thinking about it? Um, the chicken or the egg, which come first? Are you thinking about it? We have been saying, oh God, bless me. God, bless me. God, bless me. I said, okay, God said, okay. If I bless you, what happens? How many people have received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? Hmm. Put your hand down. How many people know that that is a blessing? It's a watch. 
A lot of Christians, they don't know that receiving Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior is a blessing. They think, oh, oh I'm born again. I'm going to church. Let's see. That is the religious part. But when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, it's a blessing that you have been set free from death. You have been free from the curse. You have been blessed when Jesus Christ comes into your life. Amen. Now, since you said you, say you are a Christian, how many people have you witnessed to, brought to the kingdom of God? How many people have you blessed with that blessing? Oh, really? I thought the blessing is me giving somebody money or something happening. No! The blessing first is the presence of God. The blessing is what? The presence of God. When was the last time you witnessed to somebody? When was the last time you said, oh God is doing something good for me? I'm also going to translate it to somebody's life. But no, I'm going to church to be blessed. Uh, the blessings of God must come. And God says, that is not my character. That is not the covenant. The covenant is for you to translate and transfer the blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. How many people know that they are blessed? Uh, you know you're blessed? Okay. Has somebody else experienced that blessing in your life? Oh, no, uh, my blessing is a very small one. Ah, you see, everybody starts where they are. When you see somebody, yeah, parents, listen, when you have children or you have children around you or people around you that cannot give you anything. Because they have small. Oh, when, I, when I'm blessed, when I've got money, when I win the lottery, when I have this, when I, I get promoted, I will give you money. Watch them. Just laugh. They will never. The person who gives you where they are is the person you have confidence in where they are going. Do you know that when God blesses you with a lot, your desire and your demands grows also. You know, if you have a, a, a thousand pounds right now, and that thousand pounds, uh, you cannot spend it and also use some to be a blessing because of the expenses you have. So you are waiting for 10,000 and before you start giving your parents or you give to your church, you give them, oh, I'm waiting when I get the 10,000. You are a liar. It will never happen. The moment you have 10,000, your knees, the first thing you, you see is that your friend just calls you and tells you that where you are shopping is low class. Let me show you, let me take you to some place else. And you see class. Immediately, your expenditure changes. So, it is not what you have, but it is the decisions you make. Am I talking to somebody? To be prosperous, it is not physical. It is in the mind. I know people today that if you know their bank account, you will fall down. But when you see them, they look so wretched because the glory of God is not upon them. Amen. And I know people that are living, you know, reasonably. But when you see them, like they own the world. Amen. Hallelujah. I know people that will take a hundred pounds. By the end of the month, they still have the hundred pounds in their hands. You see, people don't understand what the spiritual implication of prosperity means. We have been taught that prosperity, but you got to got everything. So you got even criminals that are in the church that thinks by accumulating, 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 then we are prosperous. You are a thief. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, whenever God wants 
you to walk in prosperity, first of all, he will remind you that it's not about you. It is not about you. There are people that cannot give because they haven't got enough. You are not a blessing. And you are not blessed. You might be carrying things in the world, but when it comes to the principles of the kingdom, you are out of sync. Hallelujah. Let, let, let me cut it short and, and run. Listen to this. Whenever God calls you to walk in prosperity, you will face challenges. Amen? Now, he told Joshua, Joshua chapter 1, I want to bring that. Joshua chapter 1, verses, verses 6 to 8. Joshua 1, 6 to 8. Now, listen carefully. On this number, days of number 5, day 5 of our fasting, listen to this. We are on a journey. Anybody coming with you, you are on a journey. Anybody not coming with you, you are on a journey. When you feel like it, you are on a journey. When you don't feel like it, you are on a journey. Why? Because you have the courage. Listen to what uh, God was telling to Joshua. He said, be strong. Be what? Be strong and of good courage. For to these people, you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give to them. Who is their fathers? Started from Abraham. It came to Isaac. Then it came to Jacob, Israel. Amen. So, remember, we said Abraham was just the a starting point. Amen? So now, Abraham has started. And then, um, uh, Joshua was continuing to bring them home, to give them the inheritance, because the prosperity has already been spoken of. So seven says, only be strong. It's repeating. Only be strong and very Courageous. The first one said, be courageous. The second one said, be very courageous. I wonder why he's saying that. Because if you see the opposition, <laughs> you will run back. Hallelujah. That is why a Christian that is not trained, listen, a Christian that is not trained is always full of excuses. And some of the excuses, they, they look real. The person who preached to Christians that they will face no challenges is the person we have to call the devil on. Amen. So you find that every time some of us, we are on a run. We are looking, we are looking for blessing. God says, hey, 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 hey. It's a walk. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. Uh, are you enjoying what I'm saying? Yes. Your faces doesn't look like it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Is it a fasting or what? Come on, smile. You can't scare me with your... I will still preach. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Only be strong and very courageous that you may what? Observe to do according to all that the law of Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left. That you may... Prosper. That you may... Prosper. Watch the word over here. is may. It's not definite. Which means there's something that you must do. Oh God, if you don't bless me, I will serve, I won't serve you, I won't go. Go. One of the things they didn't tell Christians, most Christians, listen, God is not desperate. It is your pastor that is desperate. It is a so-called men of God, women of God in the church that are desperate. So they are building Christians that are going to end up in hell. 
They will not experience prosperity because they don't know that it's a walk. They think it's an event. Prosperity is not an event. It's a walk. Hallelujah. I don't feel like it. You will never feel like it. Hallelujah. So God says, <laughs> so that you may prosper wherever you go. Wherever you go. Some of us, we, did, we weren't born in this country. Hallelujah. But we found ourselves here. Guess what? God did not just brought you here to, to wash plates forever. God did not call you here to clean the floor forever. God did not call you to do things you don't want to do forever. Let me tell you something. But whatever you are doing right now, keep doing it. D give it all your force. Uh, and follow the covenant. Uh, as you walk in there, the time you realize the company you were serving, you begin to own it. Uh, somebody say, ah, how will that happen? If I know, I will bottle it and sell it. Amen. But guess what? Guess what? It's called a walk of faith. Amen. Praise the Lord. Guess what God wants us to do? He said, because of the promise, look at verse number 8. That is the key. Look at what he said. Verse 8 said, Now this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may what? Observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Which means there is a bad success. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Some people will prosper, but the source of the prosperity is not of God. Go ahead. A man was preaching and he was saying to people, Oh, um, Elon Musk does not pay tithes, but God uh, uh, devourers hasn't come for him. I said, what a fool. These are the preachers we have today because they want to make a name for themselves. Elon Musk is not a kingdom child. Why should I even mention his name when I'm preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ? The gospel of Jesus Christ is for kingdom citizens. There are people in the church that are not kingdom citizens. They are not. But they have come in because they want to be associated with the religion of Christianity. Time will tell. Slap somebody say, whatever you do, time will tell. Hallelujah. He said, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, so shall you reap. Any person who walks with God has a future. For I know the plans that I have for you. To give you a future and the hope that you will prosper. Now, one of the things that the world wants us to know or have is the spirit of pride. Everything is us, us. We did it. We are the smart ones. Bible says, let this mind be in you. What mind? Jesus Christ, he humbled himself. He made himself of no reputation. Taking the form of a bond of the time. Let me go, let, go with me to Deuteronomy chapter 18. Now, pride causes you not to acknowledge the covenant in its true sense. You see, half and half, half and half. Well, I know what God says. I will do what I can. No, God says, if you do what I said, I will make sure that you will never be put to shame. He said, you will never be put to shame. In, in Deuteronomy chapter 18, from verse number 14, listen to what the scripture says. Verse number 14. Are you getting something out of it? I know I'm excited. It says, for these nations which you will possess. Now, it says, for these nations which you will possess, listen to the soothsayers eh? and diviners. But as for you, amen, as for you, the Lord your God has not appointed such for you. They listen to what? Should say yes. No, go back. 
They listen to what? Soothsayers and diviners. Everybody wants a prophecy. Oh, prophecy. A prophesy to us and this and that. So now they carry a long line. They're following prophecies. Listen. You can have a soothsayer, a diviner today, tell you accurately your address. He will tell you your age. He will tell you this, that, and the other. They are, in this last day, they are everywhere. Soothsayers, diviners. Oh, you know that man told me that my, my family is going to go through, is going to go through this. So what? Hey, we are going to suffer this, we are going to suffer that. Oh, really? Are you sure it's God? Good. If it is God, whatever they told you is supposed to help you know God more. Amen. Hallelujah. Then they say, buy a candle, be a candle. And then we light the candle for you and we do this. They are everywhere. Today we don't have fetish priests, Obia man and all this. We don't have them anymore. All of them, they are wearing suits. They are pastors. They are pastors. You know why? Because nobody wants to be associated with uh, oh, this side of people. They want to be in Christianity, but they want to have the same practice they have. You go to Africa, listen, you go to Africa, most of the things you hear are people that go there to have problems solved. They don't have relationship with Jesus Christ. And God is saying to me, I did not just call you to be a diviner, as you say, uh, no, there is a purpose for you. Hallelujah. Amen. What, what, go to the next verse. Let me see where we are. The Lord your God will raise up for you a what? A prophet like me from your midst, from your brethren. Him you shall hear. Who do you think he was talking about? Jesus Christ. Moses prophesied, Moses prophesied that Jesus Christ will be raised from the tribe of Judah. And when this prophet comes, you shall hear them. Because what? He will tell you all things. You know, because we are afraid to speak the word of God to a people that are not trying to walk in faith. We are actually sinking them deeper and deeper into the things of the world. Look around you. There are men and women that all they want to hear, God will bless you, God will bless you. But they don't know that the greatest thing God did for you is that you will be a blessing. Amen. Now listen, we work it from the out, inside out. He said, you will be a blessing. No, 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 no. Bless me. God said, no. I said, you will be a blessing. Oh, no, no, no. God, bless me. He said, you will be a blessing. Now, listen to me. When you hear that, you must believe and make a statement to God. Okay, God, I will be a blessing. Therefore, do what? Bless me. As a man think, so we see the selfishness and self-centeredness in Christianity, it is, it is deafening so loud. Everybody wants, everybody wants, everybody wants, and God says, hark, hark, hark. If you are not taught what to do, yeah? If you are not taught what to do, when something comes to your hand, you will do what you feel. Hallelujah. Amen. Him shall you hear. Uh, go to 16. Let me see what's in 16. According to all you desire of the Lord your God in Horeb, that is Mount Sinai, in the day of the assembly, saying, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, or let me see his great fire anymore, lest I die. That is the children of Israel. They are having a tete and tete with Moses. They say, Moses, don't, 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 don't. Don't let God talk to us. We are afraid he will kill us. <laughs> you, we will talk to you so that you go and talk to God. Hallelujah. But you see, because of God's covenant, he didn't kill them. God will never kill you. God will never let you die prematurely. He will protect you so that you know that there is a covenant. Now say, I am blessed. 
Say, God has blessed me to be a blessing. Now, look at this. In, 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 in Deuteronomy chapter 8, go to Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Look at verse number 14. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen to this. When your heart is lifted up, and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Go on. Who led you through that great and terrible wilderness in which were fiery lep- and serpents and what? Scorpions and thirsty land where there was no water. Who brought water for you out of a flint? Flinty rock. Amen. I don't know that you understand that God took his own people through this hardship. They walk among serpents, snakes, scorpions. You know when a scorpion bites you, you die. But God allowed them to walk through these people. He was taking them somewhere. He was testing them. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, look at verse number 16. Oh no. Who fed you, sorry. Who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers did not know? Hallelujah. That he may what? Humble you. you, How many people know that when, when you are on a budget, you quickly become humble? Hello? When you're on a budget, you are humble as a lamb. When you are talking with people, oh, because something is reminding you, hey, shut up, you don't have enough. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But have you watched when cash has come here and you are well healed? You know, you got bread. You know, you got the wonga, la jean, in your pocket. You got the liquidity. How do you, how do you call it in French? The bongo. You got bongo in your pocket. When you are talking to people, you talk with your shoulder raised. Anybody see what I'm talking about? I'm talking about you. You. That is what you do. Watch when you don't have money. Quickly, you become humble. <laughs> right now, is like, because, because he can see the video. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the moment money comes into you, you take phone, you speak to people the way you want. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me give you a testimony. One, one guy, I prayed for that family. They were very poor. Sorry, they were very poor. But God has begun to bless them. Over the years, he was with me, yes. And, you know, whenever I talk to him, oh, everything's how God would do it. God, and all of a sudden, God blessed them. God did what? Bless them. Something happened. Their situation, everything changed about them. Amen. One day. Come on, say one day. day. Oh, come on, you didn't say it. Say one day. day. Everybody one day will come. One day. I took a phone. This one was my second phone. So I didn't know the number. So you know the story. Then I called. Hello. Say hello. Who is this? I said, oh, um, uh, it's me. It's you. Who? I don't know this number. I said, oh, please, it's me. It's, he said, who is you? He said, oh, me, pastor. He said, what pastor? I said, this is because he knows my number. So he knows that this is not my number. So even when I say it's a pastor, what pastor? Yeah. Amen. He said, what pastor? I don't know any pastor. I said, <laughs> I nearly called the name. And I said, Amber. Oh God, it's me. Oh, pastor. Oh no, it is you. 
I, I, is it, oh, and what? Oh, sorry, sorry. I, I, why, why didn't you use your number? I said, is that the way you talk to people? I knew you. Some of you sitting in this congregation, may God drop a million in your, in your arm right now. Your true colors will come out. Amen. If God does not test you, he can never trust you. You know, people want to walk in prosperity. Amen. People want to walk in what? Prosperity. But they've never, never, never asked, why am I prospering? It's all about the kingdom. Hallelujah. It's all about the what? The kingdom. But listen to what God says. He said, who fed you with manna in the wilderness? Um, which your fathers did not know. That he may what? He may what? And that he, may, he might test you. To, to do you good in the end. He will do you what? Good in the end. Because there is blessing in humility. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at 17, 17. He said, then you will say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand have gained me this wealth. Hallelujah. If you're a kingdom child, today let me tell you a secret. Whatever God bless you with, yeah? He didn't bless you because the world over there cannot be blessed that way. Or cannot have it that way. But you are special. Amen. You are special. Hallelujah. Amen. Then you say in your heart, my hand has given me this world. Like people I know today. Amen. They are looking for excuses to stop giving to the work of God that they know they should do. But now they have become sophisticated. They are working in places uh, and God is blessing them. All of a sudden they have become thinkers. They are analyzing and questioning everything. And God said, humble yourself. Because, because you belong to the kingdom, you are playing with fire. When God humbles you, you don't want him to do that. You don't want God to humble you. You humble yourself. Hallelujah. Are you getting something? 18 when we finish. And you shall... Come on, let's go. And you shall remember the Lord your God. For it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant. What is the covenant? You shall be a blessing. Hallelujah. To establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers, as it is this day. It does not change. Go to Psalm 112. We're bringing it home. Ladies and gentlemen, raise your right hand. Say, by faith, I believe I am one of God's chosen ones. Some of you, do you believe that? I know the moment you say things like that, the devil begins to tell you about your, uh, your status now. He begins to tell you, oh, you know, you can't say this, you can't say that, you can't say this, because you don't have this, you have that. Look at you, you don't have this. I don't speak because I have. I speak because I am. Amen. No, you don't understand. Yeah. I don't speak because I have. I speak because I am. Amen. Amen. Are you here? Listen to what God says to a man who delights in the covenants of God. Are you ready? Are you ready? We are all going to read it together. Ready? Read? No. Wait. Put it on NLT for me. NLT. Are you ready? Ready? Read. Praise the Lord. How joyful are those who fear the Lord and delight in obeying 
His command. Their children will be successful everywhere. Even if they dig ditches, they will be successful. Okay? There is what? what? There, an entire generation of godly people will be blessed. Amen? Go on. They themselves will be wealthy and their good deeds will last forever. What deeds? Good deeds will last forever. Go on. Light shines in the darkness for the godly. They are generous, compassionate, and righteous. Amen? Good comes to those who lend money generously and conduct their business fairly. How many people believe it so far? You believe it? This is your covenant. Amen. Hallelujah. It gets better. Go on. Such people will not be overcome by evil. Can we repeat that? Yes. Such people will not be overcome by evil. Everyone look at me. How do something overcome you? Come, young man. You see this man? I'm taller than him. Look at me here. I'm taller than him, isn't he? I'm the big bad wolf. Hallelujah. Amen. The proverbial Goliath. And this is Oga David. <laughs> Are you watching? And I come against him. I hit him. But he was still standing there. Everything I did, he's not going down. Then, I decide that this guy, I cannot beat him. So what do I do? I turn my back and walk away. He said, no weapon form against you. It will be formed. But listen to this. You know, this guy was looking at me when I was coming. Did you see what he did? Everybody, you didn't see, did you? Did you see what he did? What? <laughs> if he has stood there like that, I will run him down. We have a protective cover. If you don't deploy it, you will be overcome. Hallelujah. He said, such people will not be overcome by evil. Hallelujah. You will not be overcome by evil. No weapon form against you shall prosper. Whatever they imagine against you, even they see you small, they can never defeat you because you are called by the name of the Lord. So, so Bishop, what if I've been facing so many problems? Tell your devil, tell those your enemy, I am still here. I am what? Still here. I am still here. Remember, it didn't come to have dialogue with you. It came to kill you. So if you are here, what does that mean? He has failed. Yes. He's not failing. Failed. He has failed. Let's clap our hands for this strong man. <clears throat> are, are you with me? Say prosperity. prosperity. Say prosperity. prosperity. The moment they talk about prosperity, I know you are all talking about money. Money is lace of it. Prosperity is what God has given you. It's whole. Your health, your wealth, your, your family, everything concerning you, it evolves in your prosperity. Day number five. Listen to this. Those who are righteous will be long remembered. Why will somebody remember you? Some of you people try to get you out of their mind. 
Because you are full of something else. But some people, wherever they go, they remember them. Because they are a blessing. They are a blessing. Let's finish it. Go on. Let's finish it. They do not fear when bad, uh, they do not fear bad news. They confidently trust the Lord to care for them. Hallelujah. Where is your confidence? Day number five. We are walking in prosperity. Remember, everything you will do in life, you have a part to play and God has a part to play. Hallelujah. Amen. They are confident and fearless and can face their foes triumphantly. Praise the Lord. We finish? Go. They share freely and give generously to those in need. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. They will have influence and honor. May you have influence and honor. May God cause you to be influential. Whatever trouble you are in, may God deliver you. May God remind you today that you are a candidate for his prosperity. People will remember the good things you do in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. Let us finish. He said, the wicked will see this and be infuriated. They will be mad. Have you seen somebody who is mad with you, but they can't touch you? Because God has just said, they can't touch this. Can't touch this. You can't touch me. Amen. You hate me. Listen, you hate me. Said, what, what keep this man going? I have done everything, but he's still standing. You can't touch me. Because you think you can see me, yeah? Run towards me. And you see, you hit the barrier. Because there's an invisible barrier. That I'm... Time. Let's finish. They will grind their teeth in anger. You see, sometimes... You see, you catch some people watching you. What is going on in your heart? They will stew in their own juice. Because they can't touch you. You are the prosperity of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. They will slick away their hopes thwarted. Everybody stand to your feet.